Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome back to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to do number 38 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. Let's start by reading over number 38. It says, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. Quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. Which of the following statements is true? Now let's just quickly highlight these words. A quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. And a parallelogram is a specific type of quadrilateral which has two sets of parallel lines. Now there are lots of different types of quadrilaterals that are parallelograms, like for example a rectangle. And we also have a square too, another type of quadrilateral that's a parallelogram. All right, so we're trying to find out what's true about the above parallelogram. So let's start with A. A says ABCD or quadrilateral ABCD has exactly two lines of symmetry. Let's highlight that phrase, line of symmetry. Now, a line of symmetry means it's a line that bisects the shape in two equal halves and you can fold the halves on top of each other. For example, with a square, we could draw a line of symmetry here and the top half is equal to the bottom half and if we folded the top half over the line of symmetry, it would match up with the bottom half. That's a line of symmetry. And a square also has this line of symmetry here. A square also has lines of symmetry on its diagonals. A square has four lines of symmetry. Now what about a rectangle? Rectangles have two lines of symmetry here and here. So squares have four, rectangles have two. What about this shape? Can you cut it in half like this? No, you can't fold this part over onto this part. It doesn't line up. Can you cut it like this and fold it on that midline? Well, A, if you folded it over, it wouldn't line up with B. And you can't do it on the diagonals just like the rectangles. It doesn't have two, it doesn't have four, it has zero lines of symmetry, all right? So A is not a true statement. We cross it out. B says point C is the reflection of point A across diagonals BD. Let's highlight that word reflection. And we're talking about uh, over a diagonal, so we got to identify that diagonal, BD. There's our diagonal line. Now, it's saying if we reflect this half over this diagonal line, A is going to match up with C. If we were to do this, A would reflect somewhere over here, the same distance from that diagonal point. And, and A wouldn't line up with C. So for that reason, we could cross out B. Because A, if it was reflected over this diagonal line, wouldn't line up with C. Let's cross it out. What about C? Reflecting ABCD over side CD is equivalent to a horizontal translation of length BC. What? Look at all that language. We got reflecting going on. We got equivalent. And then we got this phrase, horizontal translation. Right? Lots of math going on here. So let's think about what this means. Okay, so we have to we have to draw each one of these. First, reflecting ABC over line CD. So here's our line of reflection. And if we were to flip this over, it would look something like this. B would be flipped over here, and A would be flipped over here. And then if we were to do a translation, a horizontal translation, that means moving it horizontally. And it says horizontally over the length of BC, BC. So that means this right here moved horizontally to the right like this. And what would happen is our C would be here now, our B would be here. And it's saying these are going to be equivalent or equal. Now let me ask you, is a reflection over CD the same as a trans horizontal translation? Do these two things, this one or this one, line up? They don't. So these things aren't equivalent. So we could cross out C. Last one, looking for the true statement. It says quadrilateral ABCD has 180 degree rotational symmetry about the point of intersection of its diagonals. Look at all the phrases they use. And some of this stuff may be new, so you gotta practice it. 180 degree rotational symmetry about the point of intersection of its diagonals. So let's start with, uh, we're gonna talk about 180 degree rotational symmetry. And we're going we're gonna to use this image right here, thinking about the diagonals. And it's saying it's rotating this thing along the diagonals 
where the diagonals meet. So imagine we were to put a pole there and we were to spin this thing along that point, moving this sort of in a circular fashion. It's kind of hard to visualize like that, but I want you to visualize where that, that point is of intersection. Can you visualize that? Good. Now let's take that shape right there. This is our, our point of intersection. And let's see what happens when we rotate this shape. Let's start rotating it. Rotating, rotating. Move it along. Woo! Rotate it 180. 360 would be all the way around, right? So we're only going to do half that. So 180 is half of a full rotation. So we flip it like that. Now, what do we see? Well, A originally was over here, and now it's over here. And A should line up with where C originally was. And the original C should line up where the original A was. So in fact, we could say if you take this parallelogram, rotate it around the point of intersection of the diagonals, we could say that A and C do have rotational 180 degree rotational symmetry, meaning they're going to be at the same spots, approximately the same distance from the origin. All right, team, so D is the answer. Now, I team, I know that the problem throws in a lot of stuff. That's why I call this problem the kitchen sink problem. Because the writers threw in terms like quadrilateral and parallelogram and lines of symmetry and reflection and, and translation and equivalent and 180 degrees rotational symmetry. And this is all stuff that you need to break down and maybe uh, research each one of these so you're a little clear on them so that you can go back to this problem and sort of work through why A, B, and C are wrong and why D is in fact right. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. The answer here is D. Have a great day, team. Take care. Bye-bye. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, we're holding workshops in math, science, English, and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Happy